Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas Eve. Would you please rise for the chiming of the hour and the presentation of the word? Today we light the candles of hope, peace, and joy, and add to it the candle of love. How do we practice love? By sending cards and picking up the phone by practicing empathy and assuming the best in others. By learning people's stories and finding common ground. By advocating for justice and saving a place at the table. There are a million ways to practice love. So today we light the candle of love as a reminder and a charge with God's help May we bring love into a weary world. To each and every one of you today, welcome. Will you please stand now and let us uh, join together in our morning call to worship. We gather in preparation for good news is about to be proclaimed. We gather in expectation 
for joy is about to break forth in our midst. We gather in celebration, for we are a people who say yes to the manger, yes to the one incarnate for others, yes to the wholeness of God. In preparation and expectation, let us celebrate. family of faith, it feels as if we have always been waiting for more hope, more peace, more joy, and more love. Fortunately for us, our God carries enough hope, peace, joy, and love for all of us. So let us go to God in prayer together. Let us pray. Holy God, more days than not, hope slips away from us. Forgive us for holding hope so loosely. Forgive us for allowing the realities of today to define tomorrow. We know that this world needs people of hope. So today we pray, turn us into those people. With open hearts we pray, amen.
beloved, because of God's love that has come down from heaven to earth and lodged itself in a tiny baby boy in Bethlehem, you are getting ready today to hear the most remarkable story ever told. It's a true story that never grows old, but forever serves to save our souls. It's a story about a baby boy whose life, death, and resurrection reveal the depths of God's love for us, meant to fill us with exceedingly great joy. It's a story that, in fact, boggles the mind, whose central character, Jesus Christ, is indeed destined to make us and our world more loving just, and kind. Concerning this sacred and much-beloved story, Timothy Keller invites us to behold a mystery and asks this, how could the infinite become that finite? How could the extraordinary become that ordinary. Yet that is the very heart of the Christmas message. Unimaginable greatness packed into a manger. As Charles Wesley wrote in one of his hymns, our God contracted into a span incomprehensibly made man. Jesus was not born in a public arena, but in a stable. He did not go to live in a palace, but was immediately made a homeless refugee. The guests at His birth were not A-listers, but shepherds. He entered the world neither as a celebrity nor with the overblown pomp and circumstance lavished upon those of noble birth. Timothy Keller masterfully points all this out, but I would hasten to add, our Lord's birthplace was not a maternity ward, but a space that housed animals. His bed was not plush by any stretch of the imagination, but a rough-hewn feeding trough filled with hay. His mother was a, a virgin betrothed to Joseph. But their firstborn was begotten of Almighty God. As our children retell the old, old story of our absolute, extraordinary God entering our everyday, ordinary lives to be God with us, and as that wondrous story unfolds anew before our very eyes in all of its incomprehensible glory, let us behold and celebrate the Christ of Christmas, truly the light of the world, and let us join them on their way to honor and welcome the newborn King. For I tell you this day, it is true, as the wise ones know, who learn to love Jesus Christ just so, how silently how silently the wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His heaven. No ear may hear His coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls receive Him still, the dear Christ enters in.
To God be the glory for this incomprehensible gift of grace. It's now time for our children to present their Christmas play. We are all on the way. Now, before we get started, do we have any kids who want to come up and watch from right here? They can come and sit up here. Or if they want to be shepherds, we're going to have a spot during a way in a manger where you can come forward and be shepherds, okay? So is there anybody who wants to come up and sit right now before we get started? All right, come on up, come on up, Alice. Does anybody else want to come up and sit up here? Oh, come on up, come on up. Oh, I can't wait. Here, come sit right here. All right, so pull up your bulletin. You have one more thing you have to say. Kids, can you say, but who will show us the way? But who will show us the way? Okay, perfect. Ready? This is the season of Advent, the time we get ready to celebrate the mystery of Christmas, the time we are all on the way to Bethlehem. But who will show us the way? The prophets. Prophets listen to God so they can show us the way. Isaiah was a prophet who listened and spoke the word of God. He said one day Messiah, the Messiah would be born. The Messiah would be like a light shining in the darkness. This is what Isaiah said. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. The prophets, like Isaiah, listen to God. They can show us the way to Bethlehem. to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have a secret. An angel came to them and said, And Bert Augustus oh, sent not, out not the Let's, creed. Oh, not yet. No recording yet. All right. Harper, I want you to say it one more time. Ready? Mary and Joseph are on the way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have a secret. An angel came to them and said, Yes, 
Keep trying. You will have God's special son. You will name him Jesus. This is the Holy Family. They remind us not to be afraid, but to be joyful on the way to Bethlehem. In those days, Emperor Augustus sent out a decree that all people must return to their family's hometown to be counted. Joseph was from King David's family. He was engaged to Mary, and she was about to have a baby. The two of them set out from Nazareth to go to Bethlehem, the city of David. They traveled for many days through Galilee, Samaria, and the hill country of Judea. Finally, they came to Bethlehem. The city was filled with other people who had also come there because of the emperor's decree. Mary and Joseph tried to find somewhere to stay, but there was no room in any inn. They could only find shelter in a place meant for animals. There, Mary gave birth to a son and named him Jesus. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have good news. The angels came to them and said, Do not be afraid. Be joyful. Today a Savior, God's special son, is born in Bethlehem. You will find him laying in a manger. These are the shepherds and their sheep. They remind us of the, the good news. The Savior of uh, the special son of, of God is born. Shepherds live in the field near Bethlehem, watching over their feet by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. God's glory shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news, which will fill your hearts with joy. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. Here is the sign. You will find a child wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there were many angels around them. The angels praised God, saying, 
Glory to God in heaven, peace to all people on earth. When the angels went back to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and find this child who the angels told us about. They hurried to Bethlehem, searching, until they found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. Jesus was wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds told Mary and Joseph what the angels said about Jesus. Mary treasured all these things in her heart. Then the shepherds left, telling everyone they met about what happened. All the people were amazed. The shepherds returned to the fields, praising God for all they had seen and heard. The Magi are on the way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. The Magi saw a special, a special star in the sky, a star for a king. They follow the star to Bethlehem, bringing gifts for the newborn king. Gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They remind us we all have gifts we can bring. And of God's beautiful gift of Christ the newborn king. One night, a bright star rose in the sky. It shone brighter than all the other stars. Magi from the east saw the star and said to each other, A king has been born. They sent out to follow the star and find the king. Far away in the land of Israel, Herod was king. After a long trip, the Magi came to King Herod in the city of Jerusalem and said, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? We followed his star and we went to worship him. King Herod was scared about this news, and he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judah, they replied. King Herod secretly sent for the Magi to find out when the star had risen in the sky. Then he said, Go to Bethlehem and find this child. When you have found him, send word to me. I want to worship him too. But Herod was not telling the truth. He did not want to worship the child. He wanted to get rid of the child so that he could still be the king. Magi followed the star until it stopped over a house in Bethlehem. They were filled with joy when they went inside. They saw the child Jesus with his mother, Mary. They knelt and worshipped Jesus, then gave him special gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. At night, an angel appeared in the, to the Magi in a dream, warning them not to go back to King Herod. They returned to their own country by another road.
we will now take our morning offering and our magi will come up in one second to give us our prayer beforehand. All right, magi? We've got a lot of gifts to pick up, I think. All right, come on over, kiddos. I've got it. Like the magic of old, to you, we bring, our gifts to, you. We bring our, gifts to you. our gifts to you, God with us. They are not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but they delicate our love and loyalty to you. We pray that all we have in do may be used for your service. Amen.
In the beginning was Jesus the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were made through Jesus the Word. All of life and light came from him. Light shines in the darkness and cannot be overcome. Today is Christmas Eve. We celebrate the mystery of God becoming a person. Today, we are all at Bethlehem to meet the Christ child, the special son of God. Here is the newborn Christ child lying in a manger bed. This is Christ the light, a light for the whole world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I wonder how it feels to be in Bethlehem. I, won oh. I wonder how many got to Bethlehem if they saw Christ's child. I wonder how this little baby is a light to the whole world and light no darkness can overcome. Now is the time when I'm going to invite you to find your electric candle. If you don't have one and you really like one, you can kind of raise your hand and I think our ushers will bring one around. Spin the top to get it to light. We're going to get our candle light time. Kids, you want to come stand over here with me with your candles while we, while we sing Silent Night? And this is how we remember that Christ is the light of the world. And we all have a little bit of Christ that we get to shine. We get to shine our light as we go out today. We shine it everywhere we go. So let's sing Silent Night with our candles.
All right, receive this charge and our benediction. Go forth, remembering that we are all on our way to Bethlehem, full of wonder at the beautiful gift of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Go in peace to love more deeply and share the light of Christ with everyone you meet.